All right, hi everybody. So this is my first attempt at doing a document camera lecture at home using my phone. So we are gonna talk about polarization today. Polarization. Which is something that, um, it's basically a state of an electromagnetic wave. Um, we usually we think about it as a state of light. So light waves, can be what we call um, linearly polarized or plane polarized, which are essentially the same thing. And hopefully this will fit on the screen. My range of view is a little bit narrow, narrower than I would hope for here. And um, basically, when you say something is polarized, what you're saying is that the electric field vectors of the light all oscillate in the same plane. So let's write that down. So the electric field vectors, those E's, oscillate in the same plane. So you have to remember, of course, that um, that you also have those magnetic field vectors oscillating, and they oscillate in their own plane, which is perpendicular to the plane in which the electric field vectors oscillate. So we can draw our electric field like we've been doing as a transverse wave, kind of like this, right? where the electric field vectors get bigger and smaller, and then they flip direction and get bigger and smaller, and then flip direction again, and you essentially get your transverse wave of electric field. Okay, and the idea is that right now, so this wave, the way I've drawn it, the way we've been drawing them all along, is polarized in the plane of the paper. Okay, so it's all oscillating up and down in the plane of the paper. Okay, so now if you had your eyeball right here and you were looking at that wave coming at you, what you would see is something like this. So if it was coming at you, then you would see something like this. The velocity of the wave would be coming at you out of the page like that, it would be a dot, and the electric field vectors would point up and down like that. Sorry, you should have used red for electric field. Usually I use red, but this one is blue. Okay. So it looks, so this is why sometimes they call it linearly polarized because it's along a line. If you look at it coming at you and we will actually most of the time draw them looking like this. And then you just have to remember that we won't draw the magnetic field, but in this case, you'd get magnetic field vectors oscillating back and forth like that. And that is not a very good red pen. Okay, so this is polarization. It's, it's when all your electric field vectors oscillate along a line or in a plane. Now, most naturally occurring light, light from the sun, light from incandescent light bulbs is not linearly polarized. It is what we call unpolarized. So that means that the electric field vectors can oscillate any which way they want to, as long as they keep the rule that the magnetic field is perpendicular to electric field and they're both perpendicular to the velocity of the wave. Okay, so the way we usually draw unpolarized light is instead of drawing the electric field along a line, we draw them pointing in various different directions like this. So there's one possible polarization. Basically, it's a combination of lots of different polarizations. Slide that over so you can see that. Like that. Okay, and that's our unpolarized light. Remember, these are just our electric field vectors, again, all over the place. Okay, so like I said, that's what we get from natural sources. like the sun or regular light bulbs, incandescent light bulbs, etc. 
All right, so we're going to be running into both polarized light and unpolarized light. So how do you make light polarized? Well, some sources are naturally polarized, but um, if they're not, you can make it polarized by taking unpolarized light, say from the sun, and shining it through what's called a Polaroid material, which was invented by the same person who invented Polaroid cameras, which you may have heard of. And a Polaroid material, okay, um, is basically some kind of crystal or a plastic sheet, okay, that has a structure, has a basically like a grid-like structure that absorbs the light oscillating in one direction, but does not absorb the light oscillating in the perpendicular direction. All right, and so usually the way we draw it is something like this. We draw our unpolarized light. Here's our unpolarized light again, with little vectors in all directions, like that. And we say if it goes into a polarizing material, a, polari a Polaroid, or as you're gonna see, we're gonna call it a polarizer, okay, that has what we call a transmission axis. And that's the axis along which the light, which is polarized in that direction, can go through. All right, so this, has, this is a polarizer. And these lines here, these different color here. So these lines here, this is what's called the transmission axis. Okay, and that tells you what kind of light you're going to get out. Basically, you will only get light out that's polarized along the transmission axis. So you'll get something like this. So this is polarized light coming out. But unpolarized light over here going in. Okay. And there are a lot, like I said, various polymers and crystals that can do this. Okay, and that's polarized light. I am going to um, scan my notes because I'm running out of space here. Okay, but I will scan these and also put them in Canvas for you to see. All right, so that's what happens um, when you go from unpolarized through a polarizer. Now what we're going to look at is what happens if you take polarized light and you send it through another polarizer at, say, an angle, or say your light is at an angle. Okay, say for example, you have something like this. So say here's, we'll draw ourselves a vertical line there. What if you have light that's polarized like this? Okay, because it could be polarized at some angle, some angle, and that's not quite symmetric. Those vectors should be the same length as each other. Okay. So there's, it's polarized, so that's an angle theta. This is also the angle theta, okay? And you're going to send this light through a polarizer that looks like this. So here's your polarizer. It's not a very pretty polarizer. Again, this one has a vertical transmission axis like that, okay? And what do you get out the other side? Okay, I didn't leave myself enough space here, but essentially what you get is light polarized along that transmission axis, which is like that. Okay, so you end up with light that looks like this. Okay, and you might wonder, well, what's the uh, magnitude of those vectors? How do you figure it out? Well, it turns out it's basically just um, the component of the electric field vector along that vertical axis. So for example, if this one has a magnitude E0, okay, for the peak electric field there, okay, then the way it works, and let's see if I have my other pen here, okay, is that, um, this, again, is our E0, okay, like that, then this component here along the transmission axis 
basically just depends on our angle theta, it's equal to E0 cosine of theta, right? Because this is a nice little right triangle here, and that's the adjacent side to theta. Okay, so that's what we get for, ha for what happens. That's my cat you can hear in the background. Okay, cat, yes, that's Terrence. Hi, cat. All right, and so what do you get here then is, that's what happens to the electric field. Now what we're gonna do is um, look at what happens to the intensity in a minute after I get my cat to quiet down.